Bitten by a Radioactive Nymphomaniac, it's Sanctuary of Reality, my comic review series. Time now for Cerebus issue 159, the ninth chapter of Mothers and Daughters. Cerebus has appeared in Emesh at the unfinished Helix statue before King Kokor, who questions him about what happened to him after the Black Tower fell and where he went. Cerebus tells him of the moon and the judge, which are similar to Kokor and his now dead kingdom of Emesh. Kokor raves and speaks towards an apparition of what he believes is the goddess, which resembles his love, Cedra, though Cerebus sees Astoria in chains instead. The image vanishes, as does Cerebus, who learns from Suentius Poe about what happened to Kokor, Cedra, and Emesh after he left them years back. Basically, it reflects back on Chess the impotent king at the mercy of the all-powerful queen. Next, Suentius Poe continues to discuss the history of his past life, particularly his son Alfred and his life, death, and involvement with delusionism. Elsewhere, Siren is informed of her prisoner Astoria's refusal to meet with her to discuss what she knows about Cerebus until certain conditions are met. How will Siren's rage at Astoria's impudence manifest itself? Meanwhile, the pigs storm out of their homes beneath the red marches, fully armed. And after the near miss with being seduced into giving up being Cerebus's herald, Punisher Roach is internally conflicted on what to do about his one weakness, women. Who's the one annoying being in the world who can get him to snap out of it? You probably forgot all about Kokor. I know I did. Even though he did have a cameo a few issues back and had a cameo in high society, I didn't expect to see him again, especially not so soon. And to have his appearance have any resonance to the larger themes that are beginning to emerge in this book, it makes it for a very pleasant surprise. Anytime the book does a callback to the first 25 issues, that first phone book that people always say to skip, I always enjoy that because if you skipped it, then you're going to miss out on, on uh, fully enjoying moments like this. Like last issue, the only part of this particular book that I found less enjoyable was the Swentius Poe history dumps. They're fun if you enjoy fictional history to fictional universes. Uh, but otherwise, it really feels like we're retreading stuff that we already knew enough about. I know that there's meant to be relevance to the themes reoccurring in the book at this point, yet concerning Suentius Poe's prior lives, it's like stopping to look back. It's like everything else in this issue is moving forward, going somewhere, looking ahead. This is stopping and turning around, and it's just, it feels like a waste of time. I mean, I know those who forget the past or condemned to repeat it but in this case uh do we really need to know more about Swentius Poe's son Alfred no I don't think so I mean maybe this is going somewhere and I think it is but on its own as a single issue it's like oh right my Alfred seriously Alfred Poe whatever the hell his name is yeah I don't think we needed any more talk about him after the judge talked about him way back but apparently Dave thought we did Swentius Poe thought we did. Next time, pushing up Posey. <laughs> <laughs>